if the idea was to draft him to put pressure on Joe Flacco, I don't think Joe Flacco's worried. I think that, that part, <laughs> it may have happened for about a, a, a few weeks, but he can't be worried now after watching him play. And it's not surprising. He's a, he's a young guy who's got a, he's got a ton to learn about reading coverages and throwing from the pocket. You know, it is a little tough during the broadcast to hear how athletic he is every five seconds and every time he runs with the ball, it's like that's what he can do in the NFL. Yeah, he can. Yeah, we got that, you know, but now we've, we've got to develop the whole player and, and see some more some more progress. Let me ask you something about that, because I understand that if he gets pressed into action in the regular season, you do anything you can to win a football game. So whatever you got to do, if you got to install a special package for him, if Flacco gets hurt and he's got to play, then whatever you need to do in the preseason. Would you, if you were trying to develop Lamar Jackson, remove the zone read stuff, remove some of those things, and try to remove some of the things that he's going to be most comfortable with to try to get him more live action reps where he will have to simulate real NFL football or what you would call real NFL football of dropping back, reading the coverages, playing from the pocket? Well, I, I would imagine, and especially with Greg Roman being there, that they've developed a package that they w- you will see the first week of the season and you'll see throughout the course of the season. Now, they're not going to show any of that and they're not really going to talk about that, but they're working on that on a consistent basis I- in Baltimore. Yeah, the- these games are a great opportunity for him to develop the skill set outside of what we know he can already do. And, and every time he runs... It's it's exciting. I get that, but you really would like him to be able to make those decisions in the in the pocket just to to keep working on something that then he needs I don't to work think on. People, he used a lot of athleticism running to the sideline last night in last night's game for me, because he used his speed, whatever it is, four four, whatever it is. But it was to get out of bounds. It wasn't to advance the sticks. You didn't see him be able to utilize it in the type of way that they're going to have to do during the regular season. If we do what you said as far as try to do the things that he's going to struggle, by the regular season, he won't have no confidence. Okay. The reason why you do the things that he's familiar with, so he gets real live looks at the read option, like how fast was that guy? Was that guy closing? Can I take this and run with it? So it's going to have him more prepared because the package, as Coach talked about, that they're going to have ready for Lamar for week number one, it will be off of. Things like that. Now, who will be on the field? Will they have two quarterbacks on the field? All those things. They will have the element of surprise in week number one. But you got to give this kid some things that he can do well. Brian Billick, when we got Randy Moss, we had worked out all offseason in Florida. When we got to Minnesota, he said, come to my office. I was like, for what? He was like, come to my office. He was like, man, give me three things this kid can do. I said, man, a stop, a slant in a takeoff. We should have them in the first day so we can develop some confidence in them, and then we can try to explore it. Now, Randy could do other things then, but you have to make these players successful, and as successful as you can make them, the earlier, the better, before they lose their confidence. We see kids come from college every year, and what do they lose? Not ability. Not their love for football, but when they lose their confidence, it's hard to learn. It's hard to stick with it and keep progressing as a player. You've now seen three preseason games from Lamar. Is he getting better? Is he getting more comfortable? Is there can you can you see more positives at the end of three games, Coach? Well, what I what I have really liked is there's not a lot of pre-snap errors. You don't see the ball on the ground where they're fumbling snaps. You don't see a lot of guys jumping off sides where the cadence isn't quite right. He looks pretty poised and and comfortable in the role that he's been asked to play. Sometimes those guys go in and they look over caffeinated. Everything is so sped up because they're nervous or anxious. So I I like that aspect of of what I've seen from him. In terms of his overall development, we can't expect him to, to make gigantic jumps every week. So as long as he's making incremental jumps, you're happy as a coach. He started off yesterday's game terribly. It was 0 for 4, but it's even worse than the 0 for 4 sounds like. It was 3-3 and outs. He was a big part of it. He said after the game he thought one of the reasons he started off with his throws being off, I don't know if this is an excuse or an explanation, but he said, I didn't do a good job when Flacco was in the game. He's like, I wasn't warming up on the sideline. I learned now that he didn't have a lot of experience of not being a starter and realizing, got to keep my arm loose. C makes the point that Brady does that during the game like once the defense on the field he's then getting his arm loose getting ready so he said he's going to learn from that after that start 
I thought he was fine, not great, but had the one great moment. And it was the designed rollout to the right where it's a third and two. It looked to me like he could have run for a first down there. It would have been to the sideline. It looked to me right there, oh, I thought he was going to run. And instead, he finds a guy that I think was his second or third read, tight window. It's a good catch, but it's also a very good throw. That was the first moment you're like, oh. So that's interesting. Like the athleticism do the designed rollout, do it well, keeps his eyes upfield, and fits it into a small window. Not just because it was a touchdown pass, but because of everything that went into that. That was clearly his best moment of the night. Yeah, and, and going back to Chris's point, this is something that he's used to doing. Here's a design move the pocket play, yes. which plays to his strength of, of, of being able to get the edge on guys. It allows receivers to come into his vision. And, and I imagine if he plays a substantial amount, you're going to get a lot of this. And and look, there's real value in having those plays in your system, and it puts pressure on, on defenses. But in, in the traditional sense, that's not... That's not one of your more traditional plays. Man, I just I just wish that we stay on if playing quarterback in the NFL as hard as it is, how the heck do we expect to look at two or three games and think these guys are going to have it figured out? They can. are going to struggle. We just have to get used to it. So the struggle should be like Norm. It'd been like, wow, Lamar didn't look good. He's not supposed to look good. It's called professional football. It's the biggest challenge that he's ever had in his athletic career. He is at the task. And it, it's going to – man, he's going to have a lot of bad days. But he is the future of the Baltimore Ravens based on what Ozzie Newsom and the others, the others there in the front office and what, how they feel. Man, we watched Andrew Luck. He had some – he had bad days too. With all these guys – this is still the practice phase and they haven't been playing together for very long. And this is – these are young guys. And for us to think they're going to be stars right off the bat, it's just not realistic. Coach, thanks for joining us today. All right, Loved you. having you here. Coming Good up, see you. Alabama back. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.